evaluate the expressions answer in degrees and radians. Notice all the expressions involve the inverse cosecant or arc cosecant function where the domain or input will always be when x is less than or equal to negative 1 or x greater than or equal to positive 1 which are all the possible cosecant function values and the range is y greater than or equal to negative pi over 2 and less than or equal to positive pi over 2 where y doesn't equal 0. Which means the output of range in standard position will be from 0 to pi over 2 radians not including 0 radians or from 0 to negative pi over 2 radians again not including 0 radians. The first expression is inverse cosecant of negative 1 this is equal to the angle in this interval that has a cosecant function value of negative 1. On the unit circle, cosecant theta is equal to 1 over y, so we could find the point where the reciprocal of the y coordinate is equal to the cosecant function value, but it's often easier to rewrite these expressions in terms of inverse sine, since the cosecant function value and sine function value are reciprocals of one another. Once we know the sine function value, we can just locate the point on the unit circle using the y-coordinate. So again, for the first expression, we know the cosecant function value is equal to negative 1, or as a fraction, negative 1 over positive 1. And notice in this case, if we take the reciprocal, we would have positive 1 over negative 1, which is still negative 1, which indicates the sine function value is also negative 1. And therefore, inverse cosecant of negative 1 is equal to inverse sine of negative 1. To evaluate this, we now just find the point on the unit circle in this interval that has a y-coordinate of negative 1, which is this point here. And therefore, the terminal side of the angle we are looking for is this ray. The initial side is here. The angle we're looking for is not 270 degrees or 3 halves pi radians because that is not in the output or range of inverse cosecant or inverse sine. We need to rotate clockwise and therefore the angle is in negative 90 degrees or in radians negative pi over 2 radians or negative 1 half pi radians. So this is equal to negative 90 degrees or in radians negative 1 half pi radians. Next we have inverse cosecant of negative 2, which indicates that the cosecant function value is equal to negative 2 over 1. Let's find the sine function value by taking the reciprocal of this. The reciprocal of negative 2 over 1 is 1 over negative 2, which is equal to negative 1 half, which means we can rewrite inverse cosecant negative 2 as inverse sine of negative 1 half. To evaluate inverse sine of negative one-half, we locate the point on the unit circle in this interval that has a y-coordinate of negative one-half, which is this point here. So the terminal side is this ray, the initial side is this ray, and again the angle is not 330 degrees or 11 sixth pi radians because that angle is not in the range or output of inverse cosecant or inverse sine. We need to rotate clockwise, and therefore the angle is negative 30 degrees, or in radians, negative pi over 6 radians, or negative 1 sixth pi radians. So this is equal to negative 30 degrees, or negative 1 sixth pi radians. Next we have inverse cosecant of square root 2, which means the cosecant function value is square root 2 over 1. Again, let's find the reciprocal of this, which will give us the sine function value. The reciprocal is 1 over square root 2. We will need to rationalize the denominator here in order to recognize the sine function value on the unit circle. So now we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. And we simplify. This is equal to square root 2 divided by 2, which means inverse cosecant square root 2 is equal to inverse sine of square root 2 over 2. Evaluating inverse sine of square root 2 divided by 2, we now look for the point of the unit circle in this interval that has a y-coordinate of square root 2 divided by 2, which is this point here. So this is the terminal side of the angle. This is the initial side. Rotating counterclockwise, 
the angle is 45 degrees, or in radians, pi over 4 radians, or 1 fourth pi radians. So this is equal to 45 degrees, or 1 fourth pi radians. For the last example, we have inverse cosecant of 2 square root 3 divided by 3. So if the cosecant function value of the angle is 2 square root 3 divided by 3, again, let's find the sine function value, which is the reciprocal of this which gives us 3 divided by 2 square root 3. We need to rationalize the denominator though to recognize the sine function value on the unit circle. So we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. This gives us 3 square root 3. Here we have 2 times 3 which is 6. But notice how this does simplify. There's 1 3 and 3 and 2 3's and 6. This simplifies to the square root of 3 divided by 2, which indicates that the inverse cosecant of 2 square root 3 divided by 3 is equal to inverse sine of square root 3 divided by 2. So now we find the point of the unit circle in this interval where the y coordinate is square root 3 divided by 2, which is this point here. And therefore, this is the terminal side of the angle. This is the initial side rotating counterclockwise, the angle is 60 degrees, or in radians, pi over 3 radians, or 1 third pi radians. So this is equal to 60 degrees, which is equal to 1 third pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.